When someone comes up and says something like, I am a God, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I just told you, that's who I think I am. How could you say that? How could you have that mentality? Hey guys, what's up? Skyrim is an amazing game, but before we dive into that, I want to celebrate something really quick here. We hit 200 subs. That is fan-freaking-tastic. Thank you guys for watching the videos and supporting the channel. Really means a lot to me. Though I'm sure a lot of you are going to back me up when I say this. Skyrim is one of the greatest games of all time. All elements of the game are fun, all except the spiders, which I'm actually terrified of. But hey, some things that I find fun are exploits and glitches that help you create god characters with insane stats. So in this video here, I'm going to show you some tricks and exploits that I like to use when I'm playing Skyrim. We are going to start off with the vendor reset trick. It is easy peasy. Just got to go to a vendor, you buy or sell whatever you need. I'm going to buy some iron, silver, and steel. I'm also going to sell some dragon bones here so I can get all of that gold back, all 2,877. You then just back out of the shop, you drop a quick save, and then you hurt the vendor in any way. You can punch them, beat them down with a mace, throw some magic at them. Then you just reload that quick save right before you did any damage to them. Go back into their inventory, into their shop. They're gonna have more gold again and they're going to reload on a lot of their items and that's it this trick right here is going to provide you with infinite you know vendor items and also infinite gold we'll get more into that at a later time this one's in the name go to dawnstar and make sure the vendor akari is there you might have to wait around a bit her schedule is horrible probably all that moon sugar now this vendor right here has some awesome and very important items this chest is special because it's open for you to grab anything from that vendor for free. You just have to walk down this path here to the left of the mine, by this tree here, and just a bit to the right of this rock. The items you should look out for are Grand Soul Gems, Lock Picks, Iron Ingots, and Gold. The most important part of this is grabbing enchantments. The main ones you want are Alchemy, Smithing, Carry Weight, Health, Magic, and Stamina. Use the vendor reset trick to find what you are looking for. You should use the Jarl's place to disenchant anything you grab from the chest. It's right along the path you're using, so it's pretty convenient. The enchanting table is in the room on the left. It may be tempting to grind out level 100 enchanting using this location, but don't sweat any levels right now. We're going to take care of all that here in a bit. Before we continue, I want to let you know that I do stream on Twitch pretty much every day except for Sundays. You can find a link to that down in the description below as well as links to my Discord and my merch store, Blissful Mind. This next part here is going to help you get a ton of items. So here it is, the duplication trick. To get this going, you're going to need a follower. You can use whoever you want, but I like to use Lydia. Make sure you also have the Breeze home because you need a place to store your stuff. Bring your follower with you and go to the left of the White Run entrance. Here you'll find a little nook that helps keep the duplicated items from flying everywhere. Now talk to your follower and ask them to do something for you and have them wait in the back of the nook, right next to the barrel. This is just for efficiency, so don't sweat if they're not perfectly in the center. You might have to tell your follower to wait again. For some reason, Lydia likes to forget. To make sure they're waiting, talk to them, and you should see the option follow me. Once you're sure that they're waiting there, open up your inventory. Go to the item you want to duplicate, and here's where we're going to drop them. I'm duping Grand Soul Gems because it's a part of our grocery list for later. Also, make sure you're dropping one at a time. To make this a bit easier, you can use LB, RB, or L1, R1 to speed up the amount menu. These items you're dropping on the ground are what's going to be duplicated, so the more you drop, the more you'll dupe. Once you drop the items, talk to your follower and have them pick up all of the items you just dropped. Once they have everything, leave Whiterun out of the front gate. You're going to turn right around and go back to the nook. The items you dropped are going to be on the ground again, and they're actually going to be in your follower's inventory too. Now you can grab the duplicated ones from the follower and drop those to make a bigger pile or just have them pick the same items up to dupe the same amount again. I have only duped about 50 items at a time, and I really don't recommend you going higher than that because you can make your game lag or even crash. 
something's not working or you run into a pickle or something, uh, hit up the comment section down below. Let me know what's going on and I'll see if I can help you out. You can also just go hunt me down on Twitch if you want, but if you don't, that's okay too. Let's continue. There's two skills you need to work on for this to work at its peak. Enchanting needs to be at 100 so you can have its final perk called Extra Effect. It lets you put two enchantments on the same item, but that requirement freaking hurts. It's a lot of a grind, but trust me, it's so worth it. Alchemy's next, and you'll need this at 40. The important perk here is Benefactor, which you get at level 30. It gives you a nice percentage boost to your created potions. When you finally reach level 40, go ahead and drop a perk into Alchemist here to finish off the tree. The Alchemy's a skill you don't even really have to sweat for. You can use Arcadia and Whiterun to train you. It costs a bit of gold, but you get 5 skill points per level, so if you train 5 times at level 6, you have to level up to 7 to be able to train another 5 times. The items in gold you got from the Dawnstar chest should cover the cost here. Enchanting is a bitch to level up. To ease the pain a bit, head on over to the Guardian Stones over by Riverwood. Once you're there, grab the effect from the Mage Stone. It gives you a 20% XP bonus. Now head back to the Breeze home. Go to whatever bed here and sleep. Sleeping gives you the well-rested effect that gives you a 10% XP bonus. And yes, this does stack with the Mage Blessing. To finalize the enchanting grind, you'll need 300 soul gems and 100 to 200 iron daggers. Only about 100 to 200 soul gems will be used to max out your enchanting. The remaining ones will be used for the final puzzle piece. So you actually get to skip level 100 enchanting only if you don't want to grind all those items out and if you don't want two enchantments on every single item on your character. I prefer it and I think it's super epic to have two enchantments on every single item. But uh, yeah, you do what you need to do. Still, you should try it out one time. It's, it's pretty fun. Now for the restoration loop. Make sure you have 100 blue butterfly wings and snowberries. You could probably get away with only 50 of both long fins and spade tails, depending on your alchemy level, but stick with 100 of each to avoid more trips. Next is apparel. You'll need four items with fortify alchemy. Hand gear, rings, necklaces, and headgear can have that enchantment. Make sure each item gives you at least a 17% boost to alchemy. Last thing you're gonna need is an extra unenchanted ring or necklace. This is gonna be enchanted with two staple enchantments, Fortify Smithing and Fortify Carry Capacity. With those four enchanted items equipped, hit up the Alchemy Lab and combine the Long Fin and Spade Tail to create a Fortify Restoration Potion. Now go ahead and drink that potion. The four enchanted items will have an even higher boost to Alchemy now. Unequip those four items, and then without leaving your inventory, put those same four items back on. Now head back into the alchemy lab and create another FR potion. Congrats, you little champion. You've started the loop. If you have a pretty low alchemy level, you might have to do this a few times, so just keep doing the loop. So it's drink potion, unequip items, Equip items. So it's drink create potion, FR potion. Unequip items. Drink potion. Equip items. Drink potion. Equip potion. Equip items. Create FR potion. Drink potion. Equip items. Unequip items. Drink potion. Equip potion. Drink potion. Unequip items. So it's drink potion. Create FR potion. Create FR potion. Create FR potion. And yeah, you get it, right? Well, let's hit the brakes for a second. To avoid crashing your game, we're going to bring the multiplier down a notch. So once your items are above 100% boost, continue the loop with three items being equipped instead of four. You see that I'm not going to equip the gauntlets again. This gives us a tighter grip on how high these numbers get and how fast they get there. Now we can keep the loop going. So here I drop another item at 54,679%, leaving us with two items being used in the loop. This is why I don't equip the gold ring. And smooth as butter here, one last FR potion with a percentage of 147,892,896. This is going to change our items to 25,141,808%. I drop down to one item giving me the 25 mil boost. You can see there, I only equip the necklace. 
hit up the lab one last time and create a fortify enchanting potion with the blue butterfly wings and snowberries. Use up both ingredients since these are the potions you really want. If your number is as pretty as the 2.6 mil there, then you are set. Next, we're gonna scoot on over to the enchanting table. Once you're in front of it, drink one of the fortify enchanting potions you just made. We're gonna enchant that extra necklace or ring we have with carry capacity and fortify smithing. You can go ahead and uh, ignore the negative number there. Those are actually the numbers we gods use to describe So just add the Grand Soul Gem into the mix and voila, your first super item. Let's go and see what this super item can do. I'm going to Legendary Smithing and Speech so we can see how high our skills will get in one go. I'm going to create one Iron Dagger and head over to the Grindstone. Let's just make sure the super item here is equipped. You'll see the Iron Dagger's value will change from 10 to 2 million plus, and the damage from 6 to 365. Oh god, instantly, from level 15 smithing to 100 with 2 Iron Ingots. And since smithing went up to 100, we can improve our ultimate Iron Dagger even further. The damage here breaks for whatever reason, but the value goes from 2 million to 120 million. You can buy all of Skyrim with one Iron Dagger. Let's go and see how our speech does with the dagger's value at 2 million. So at level 15 speech, the gold we will receive is 770,219. Let's sell it and, oh, instantly from level 15 to 100. On top of the instant 100, you get all of their gold. Using the super enchanting potions, you can add on the other enchantments to have infinite health, magic, stamina, and you can actually one hit kill with any weapon, including your fists. So with this item here, you get infinite levels and infinite gold. Also with sneak this high, I can crouch walk all around everywhere and never get caught. Also lock picking is a joke now, you don't have to try even with the master locks. And that right there was my god character Sayla. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you hit that like button, helps out the channel a ton. For now, my other content is Call of Duty, so if you want to go watch that, just uh, check out the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video here, and as always guys, stay bliss. See you in the next one. I really like this jump here. Look, not even a tickle of damage.